the same. No, you are. All right, very good. Uh, Ms. Wilson, once you leave us on the record, let's check on the progress of our jury. If everyone is here, go ahead and turn them on in. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Have a seat, please. Welcome back to the Matter of State of Ohio versus Lindsay Parker. Because it appears that all of our jurors are present and are uh, currently uh, placing their lanyards around their necks. <coughs> kind of getting used to this. Ladies and gentlemen, before we uh, get started, of course, I have to start off by asking about the admonitions. Anyone have any issues that need to be reported before we uh, begin testimony today? I see no hands uh, indicating no issues. So at this time, uh, State of Ohio, are ready to call its next witness? Yes, Your Honor. At this time, we would call Deputy Mayor. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? So, you got it. I do. Yes. Or Deputy? Good morning, sir. Debbie, before we get, uh, begin, we do have folks in the media here. Do you have any objections to your likeness, your, your facial image potentially being used on the news? No, Your Honor. Uh, very good. Ms. Sheehan, you may proceed and direct whenever you're ready. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning. Good morning. Can you please state your name? My name is Damon Mayer. And, sir, how do you spell your last name? M-A-Y-E-R. What is your current occupation? I'm a deputy sheriff with the Butler County Sheriff's Office here in Butler County, Ohio. How long have you been employed with the Sheriff's Office? I was hired March 3rd, 1997 as a paid employee, so it's a little over 22 years. And what are your current duties as a Sheriff's Office deputy? I'm assigned to the Road Patrol, and I'm a Hanover contract car. I'm contracted through Hanover Township as a Road Patrol deputy assigned to Hanover Township in Butler County. Sir, I want to direct your attention to March 8th of 2018. Were you working that day? Yes, I was. Were you in uniform? Yes. Were you in a marked car? Yes, Unit 1414. At that time, sir, were you dispatched to 4050, so 4050 Shank Road? That is correct. Myself and Hanover Township Life, Life Squad was dispatched there. And is that located in Hanover Township? Yes, it is. Butler County, Ohio? That's correct. And Deputy, what was the nature of that call? I responded there with Hanover Township Life Squad for an unconscious three-year-old. And Your Honor, at this time, based on a stipulation uh, by defense counsel with the state, we move to admit and publish state's exhibit 88, the 911 call at this time. Defense? No objection. All right, you um, said 88, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, 88 will be admitted. You may publish whenever you wish. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Kneel right next to her and look at her mouth for any food or vomit. Her daddy's here too. 
Okay, is there anything in her mouth? No, there's nothing in her mouth. Okay, now place your hand on her forehead and other hand on under her neck, then tilt her head back. Okay. Put your ear next to her mouth. Can you feel or hear anything? Yes. Yes, is she breathing? Yes, she's like, yes, I feel some air coming out of her mouth, yes, and she's asking for air. She's doing her best. Okay. Just a little bit? Yeah. Okay. She's okay, she's breathing, she's okay. Okay, is it her breathing effective? Yes, I mean, she's breathing. Is she gasping or? She's gasping, yes, she's gasping. Okay. I have a cold on. She felt really bad yesterday when we were cleaning her garage. Okay. I want you to stay. I want you to stay right with her and make sure her head is carefully tilted back. Check yeah. her breathing often. Okay. It's okay. All right. Can you give me the phone to someone who's with her? I'm. I'm literally trying to make sure I'm coming back to the garage. Is she in the garage right now? Yes. Okay. Is the garage open? Yes, the back door is open from around the side. Okay. What's your name? Lindsay. Lindsay, what's your last name? Pardon? Pardon? Yes. Okay, what's your phone number, Lindsay? 513-884-5354. Is that her crying in the background? No, that's my little one. Okay. Okay, are you with her now? No. Ma'am? No, she's not okay. Lindsay, what's going on? She's still doing asking for air. Okay. Okay, is her head tilted back and is she on her back? Yes, her head is back. Okay. And there's nothing in her mouth, correct? No, there's not. Hey, what's up? Hey, okay. Okay. You're okay. Okay, just make sure her head is tilted back. That will assure that her airway is open. Okay. Okay. So the medic is on the way, and we've got the deputy on the way as well. Alright. So the deputy will get there and help you out too. Hey. How's your breathing right now? It's off and on. It's off and on? So stop breathing for a second, then you'll take one big gap and then. Okay, just make sure that she's flat on her back and that her head is tilted back. Hey. That's going to open her airway for her. Breathe. Make sure that there's nothing under her head. There's nothing under her head. Okay. Right on her back. Hey. Is she changing color at all? No. No? Okay. Okay, is that her in the background? Her breathing, yes. Yes, okay. Correct. All right, they're on their way to you. I can hear. I don't know. She was fine. Lindsay, it's okay. They're on the way. Okay, she's still laying on her back? Yes, yes. 
Okay, and is their head still tilted back? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay. I know, I don't understand that he called oh. when he was late. Okay, they they gotta get their equipment ready. I know, he's scared. It's okay. They're gonna be there? They're here. actually came in at 7.03. A.M. or P.M.? A.M. Are you aware of what phone number made this call to 911? In the, in the actual call, it was listed as Lindsay Harton. You said Lindsay Harton? That's what it says on the call, the okay. CAD call. CAD call is a computer-assisted or computer-aided dispatch call. And is that something that you would have access to? Yes, I do. Was there on this computer, I'm sorry, repeat it again. You said CAD, but computer CAD assisted. CAD stands for computer aided. Some people say computer assisted. Okay. Would there be a phone number listed on this? That is correct. There would be. Okay. That document, would that refresh your recollection regarding the phone number that placed that phone call? That's correct. Uh, if you could show it to me. At this time, uh, I'd ask to approach the witness. You may. Sir, I'm handing you it's been marked States Exhibit 89. Can you go ahead and take a look at that document? It is the CAD report for the call that I responded to. Is that a true and accurate copy of that report? It appears to be, yes. After reviewing that report, do you now know the phone number that would have made the call to 911? It is 513-884-5354. Sir, you said the call came in to dispatch around 703. At what point were you dispatched? I was actually dispatched at it would have been 704 I actually started responding at 705 just make sure you keep your voice nice and loud I'm having a little hard time hearing. yes ma'am I'm sorry so you said approximately 704 you were dispatched at That's what point correct. were you on route to 40 50 Shank Road 705 a.m. what time did you arrive sir I arrived at 717 a.m. it's March 8th of 2018 what's the weather like that day it was probably cool I don't I don't recall exactly what the temperature was so you arrive on scene what do you do next um, in the CAD call they had re re 
as you heard in the 911 call, they told us to go around to the side of the house, to the back of the garage, if you're looking at the house to the right. So when I pulled into the drive, I saw the squad. It was already parked there on the, on the right-hand side of the residence. So I responded to that back door. It was to the garage. It was on the back side of the house. So you said you responded to the garage. When you entered the garage, what did you see? Immediately as you walk in, you can see a couch to your right, the squad members, and uh, then there was two other subjects. Lindsay, Lindsay Parton was there and Jason Weshy was there. And then Hannah was laying on the couch. She was on her back. And your honor, permission to approach? Witness. You may. I'm Hannah Youth, been previously marked States Exhibit 2 and States Exhibit 3. Go ahead and take a look at those two exhibits. <coughs> Do you recognize those exhibits, States Exhibit 2 and 3? Yes, it's a picture of the entrance door where I came through and also the couch where Hannah was. And do those pictures fairly and accurately represent the garage as you saw it on March 8th of 2018? Yes. Your Honor, these have already been admitted. Permission to uh, show the jury. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, State's Exhibit 2 should be appearing on your screen in any moment. Shane, just one moment uh, while we're doing that. Uh, do we have a witness uh, back there that might be testifying? No. I, I just saw it. looks like a, a sheriff's badge there on the bench. I didn't know if that there was There is, but it's not. That's not one of our Okay, just double checking. No. Right. My apologies. No. Oh. And then. All right. Thank you. Sir, State's Exhibit 2, what are we seeing? That is a picture of the garage. You can see through the right-hand side of the photo. That's the, that's the entrance door that I came in. And you can see the brown couch. It's next to the red toolbox. Uh, that's where Hannah was laying. She was laying on that couch. In State's Exhibit 3, what are we seeing? That is also a picture of the garage with the entrance door and also the couch. And you indicated in addition to Hannah laying on the couch, you also saw two other individuals. Who were those individuals? One was Lindsay Parton, Jason Weshy, and the two squad EMTs. Do you see Lindsay Parton in the courtroom today? Yes. Can you please identify where Lindsay Parton is and what she is wearing? Yes, she's sitting next to her attorney. She's wearing a black top and a looks like a red or pinkish your Honor, at this time I'd ask that the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant. It'll reflect. Thank you. Please tell me and the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what your observations of the child Hannah were at that point. Could you repeat, please? <clears throat> Can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what your observations of Hannah were at that point? At that point, she was laying on her, on her back on the couch. Her head would have been facing towards the street, which would be away from the, where the red toolbox is. Her feet would have been at the toolbox. Her head would have been at the other end of the couch. Did you go up to Hannah? I did not make contact with Hannah at that point. The EMTs were preparing her. They were getting ready to put her on a cot to transport her to the hospital. Tell me about your observations, not just of the placement of Hannah, but tell me if you, when you looked at Hannah, what were you seeing? I, after, I got a better look at her when they actually put her on a cot and we were taking her to the squad. Tell me about that. Okay. I noticed that she had a bruise up on the, it would have been on her left side, up over, above her eye. Her eye was also bruised, her left eye. And I noticed a, a bruise on her chin. Um, and when we were pushing her out to the squad, I would have been on her, if she's laying back, I would have been on her right side. And I remember she opened her eyes up, open once, and I never did see her pupils. All I could see was just the whites of her eyes. 
and then they loaded her up into the squad and prepared her for transport. Your Honor, permission to approach the witness. You may. Your Honor, I'm Sergeant Jennifer Hoffman. I'm here on behalf of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. It's been marked states exhibit 41 and 49. Your Honor, can we approach, please? Thank you. Have you had a chance to review States Exhibit 41 and 49? That is correct. And do you recognize those exhibits? Yes. And how do you recognize those exhibits? That is the same three-year-old victim that I saw that day as being as Hannah Weshi. And the bruising depicted in those photographs, is that a true and accurate depiction of the bruising that you saw on Hannah on March 8, 2018? I do not recall seeing all of these bruises, but I did see some of these bruises. Your Honor, at this time, we would seek to ad uh, admit and publish State's Exhibit 49. Uh, defense, any further objection other than what's been placed on the record? Yeah, we do. It doesn't depict what he saw. So, let's approach. Gentlemen, have a seat. Before we continue, any issues that need to come to the court's attention? Seeing none, Ms. Sheehan, if you'd like to just uh, continue, please. Thank you. You're on a permission to reapproach the witness. You may. Sir, I'm rehanning you. It's been marked State's Exhibit 41. I know we've already had some discussion about State's Exhibit 41. Again, sir, do you recognize that exhibit? Yes. All right, a, and what is that? It's a photo of Hannah Weshi. That photo of Hannah, is that a true and accurate depiction of the bruising that you saw on Hannah on March 8, 2018? There is bruising that I did see in this photo. There's additional bruising that I did not see. Which bruising did you see? I did see the bruise by her chin, her left eye, and just above her left eye. Your Honor, at this time, State's Exhibit 41 has already been admitted and published to the jury. Permission to republish to the jury. Noting continuing objection, I will allow republication with the testimony that has been given. Go ahead. And, sir, this is a touch screen. Can you please, sir, it's not up? It's up now. Can you please circle? On State's Exhibit 41, the bruising that you yourself saw on March 8, 2018 on Hannah Weshi. That's my finger. Yes. you got to press a little harder, too. And can you please describe for the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what you have circled? That would be her chin, her left eye, and just above her left eye. At the time that you saw Hannah, how was her hair? It appears that she had longer hair, so her hair would have been down. Make sure you keep your voice up nice and loud. Her hair would have been down a little bit farther. Okay, and when you say down a little bit farther, you motion. It would have been her bangs would have been down. So I did not see, like, the top of her forehead. Her hair was also over covering her ears, so I wouldn't have seen her ears. And what and was she, I'm sorry. And she also, I, I did not see from her neck down, she had a shirt on. And, sir, you indicated that Hannah was lying on the couch and that EMS was working with her. What happened next? They picked her up and put her on a cot. And then when we wheeled her out, I noticed that she, she didn't have normal breathing. She had abnormal breathing. And she also sounded congested. What were you hearing? It sounded like she had, like, fluid in her lungs or like her nasal passage was blocked, Object. that type of... Objection. Does not qualify as an expert. As to nasal passages, 
I think most people have the ability to distinguish. At least up to this point, I'll overrule the objection. Thank you, Judge. <coughs> at this point, they move hand of the cot. What happens next? They moved to the cot. We wheeled her out. That's when, it's when I observed the bruises is where he's going out to the squad. Um, we ended up loading her up into the squad, and then I turned around, and I was walking back to the residence to collect the information on her. Okay. You said you were, so you, you went outside? Yes. All right. When you went outside, tell me about your observations there. I just helped them load her into the squad, and when I turned around and I started walking back to the to the same garage door that I went through when I first got there, I noticed that Mr. Weshey was sitting in his car. He was waiting for the squad to leave so he could go to the hospital. He was going to, I suppose, follow the squad to the hospital. Did you notice anything significant about Mr. Weshey, Jason Weshey's car at that time? He was just sitting in his car. It was running. It appeared to be okay. You indicated that you went back into the residence to take some information. Tell me about that. I went back into the residence. I originally thought that that Lindsay Parton was the mother because I hadn't asked any questions due to us preparing Hannah to be transported. So I hadn't asked any questions. So I went back in to ask questions. I assumed that she was the mother when I first got there. Um, and that's when I realized that she was not the mother of Hannah. Did you speak to the defendant, Ms. Parton, in this case? Yes, I did. And what did she say? I asked her what happened. She stated that her father, Jason Weshey, responded over there. She stated that she often babysits Hannah and Jason showed up that morning and when he dropped her off um, she walked through the garage she walked up the steps into the house said that she just passed out she fell face forward into the carpeted floor so when you say she walked in who are we talking about that Hannah when Hannah came in that she had she had asked her for a donut and to sit on the couch and that's when she said she just passed out fell face forward into the carpeted floor so I just want to be absolutely clear because we're, we're dealing with two she's here. So okay. can you tell specifically who walked, who asked? Okay. Go ahead. Lindsay Parted stating that when Hannah Weshey came in, that Hannah asked for a donut and to sit on the couch. And that's when Hannah passed out, fell face forward into the carpeted floor. And it would have been leading from the garage into the residence. Did you look at the flooring in the garage? Yes. And what was the flooring in the garage? It was concrete. Did Ms. Parton indicate where the carpeted floor was located? <clears throat> the carpeted floor is in the kitchen. All right, I suppose right before you get to the, you can see the kitchen from the entrance from the garage to the house. It could technically be the dining room. Did Ms. Parton indicate, other than babysitting for Hannah, where Hannah lived, where Hannah resided? Yes, because I thought she was the mother, that's when I inquired where Hannah lived, she stated that she actually lived next door, and that would have been 4004 Shank Road. It's the house, to, if you're looking at 4050, the address we responded to, the house directly to the left would have been 4004 Shank Road. And that's where Hannah and her father, Jason, lived. When you were outside earlier when EMS was loading Hannah, uh, were you able to tell which house was which? Yes. Are you familiar with that area, Shane Road area? Because I'm a contract car, Hanover Township contract car, I respond to all the, all the calls in Hanover Township. Um, I'm very familiar with the road. I've worked the west side of the county pretty much most of my career, so I'm very familiar with Shank Road. Permission to approach the witness at this time? Yeah, right. <coughs> Mr. Henning, it's been Mark States, Exhibit 87. Can you go ahead and take a look at that? Do you recognize States, States Exhibit 87? Yes, ma'am. And what is that? It's a picture of 
the dead end section of Shank Road. And yeah. sir, is that a true and accurate depiction of how the roads look in that area, specifically on Shank Road? Yes. And at this time, we seek to admit and publish dates exhibit 87. Defense? No objection. All right, there'll be an engine public. That is a, a picture of the dead end of Shank Road. You can see it comes comes straight. It looks like there's a pickup white pickup truck in the bottom right hand corner, and it's right at the 90 degree turn right. You would actually be traveling northbound as soon as you go around that right hand turn. The first house to your left would be the 4004 Shank Road. The next house that you would come to would be the 4050 Shank Road. And there is actually another house on the right, and there's a, a business that's in the back. Can you go it's ahead not in and, the photo. Oh, I'm sorry. It's in, neither one of those are in the photo. Can you go ahead and circle States Exhibit, I'm sorry, on States Exhibit 87, can you please circle 400 Shank Road, Jason Weshey's residence? And can you please put a square around 4050 Shank Road, Ms. Parton's residence? It's kind of a square. <laughs> and were you able to tell the distance between those two houses? They're actually about a telephone pole apart, two telephone poles apart, which is approximately 200 feet. You said approximately 200 feet? I guess right around 200 feet. And you indicated that there were, there was another business that wasn't shown. Yes. And where was that located? It would be directly north at the very dead end section. You're on commission to approach the witness. You may. Sir, I'm handing you States Exhibit 86. Can you go ahead and take a look at that exhibit as well? Do you recognize States Exhibit 86? Yes. And what is that? That would include the business in the other house that I was speaking of. And sir, is that a true and accurate depiction of the roads on Shank Road to include the business that we previously discussed? Yes. And at this time, State would seek to admit States, in states Exhibit 86. Um, no, uh, no objection. No good management publish. So what are we looking at on this screen? And feel free to circle as you see fit. Uh, this would be the, like the main house, I, I suppose, to the business. And this is the actual business that's back here. I know that they do have like track hose, large equipment and stuff that's back there. And do you, can you see in State's Exhibit 86 uh, the defendant's residence? Yes. And can you please place a square? around that. And in States Exhibit 86, can you also see Jason Weshey's residence? Yes. And can you go ahead and circle that? So you indicated at some point you spoke to the defendant in this case. Where were you when you spoke to her? When I spoke to her, I was back in the house in the garage area. When you spoke to the defendant, did she indicate to you any other falls or injuries that Hannah may have received? She stated that the day before, which would have been March 7th, approximately 4 p.m., that she was playing in the garage and she fell and hit her head on the concrete floor of the garage. And when you say she fell and hit her head, are we talking that about That would Hannah? have been Hannah. Did she indicate anything else about that injury? <coughs> she stated that she contacted Jason about it. 
she as in Lindsay. She being Lindsay, is that yes. what you said? After you spoke with the defendant, what did you do next? After I spoke with the defendant, I cleared the residence, I made some CAD entries um, into the call, and then I met up with the supervisor to discuss what, what I saw, and I requested that the detectives be called out. When you said you made some CAD entries, what does that mean? We can make notes in the calls to make them permanent record. Um, so I usually do that on my calls. Just it, one, it helps your memory so you don't forget stuff, especially when you go do a report and that kind of stuff. So I usually type in notes. Um, so I type that into the call, and then I cleared the scene. What type of information are you inputting? Um, usually just notes, stuff that I observed. Sometimes I'll put in there, like if I go to another location, I'll type in the other location in there. So it automatically puts a, a timestamp on it, a date and time stamp, and it actually states each time there's an entry made into that CAD call in the narrative, it actually says who it was from. It puts the timestamp, a specific point in time, which is the date and the time, and who actually entered it. You indicated that you were talking to a supervisor. Where were you when that conversation happened? I saw him over at Hanover Park, and that's where I met up with him. So you had physically left the residence? Yes. After you talked to supervisors, what did you do next? Um, I was dispatched to receive another call from the hospital, so I responded to the hospital, um, and I ended up meeting Mr. Jason Weshey there, along with detectives, and Lindsay also showed up. When you said you were dispatched to the hospital, was this the, for the same incident or a different incident? It was, I responded to the hospital because of what the, the doctors saw the hospital had called. Um, in reference to the injuries to Hannah Weshey. What hospital did you respond to? Fort Hamilton Hospital. Approximately what time did you get there? I responded there approximately 8.38. And tell me, while you were at the hospital, what are you observing? What's happening? I, I saw Mr. Wet, Mr. Jason Weshey. He was at, sitting in, it's not the waiting, you go into the emergency room, It was he was in the hallway towards the right. Uh, I saw him sitting there, so I met with him. Um, they were preparing to air care Hannah Weshi from the scene, so I never saw her there. Was the defendant there? She showed up after I did. Lindsay did. Did you stay at the hospital? I stayed there for a short time. Detectives <laughs> responded there, and they, inter they spoke with both Lindsay and both with J Jason Weshi. The detectives were Steve Sprague and Janae Lambert. When you left the hospital, where'd you go? When I left the hospital, I went with both detectives, Janae Lambert and Steve Sprague, back to the 4050 Shank Road address, and we were going to meet Lindsay Parton back there. And did she show up? Yes, she did. At that point, when you're at 4050 Shank Road, what are you doing? I just, I stood by in case they needed anything. They, the detectives took photos and received statements. I may have just a moment, Your Honor. Take time. <coughs> Your Honor, I have no further questions for this witness. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Ms. Howard, you're going to be done any cross? I will, thank you. You may be seated in every row. That's why I was wondering if you knew which ones I had. Of course I'm going to. Thank you. Good morning, Deputy Mayor. Mayor? Mayor. Mayor. That's correct. Sorry, I, I have an easy last name. I No one mispronounces Coker or Howard, so. Um, we've never met before, is that correct? I've seen you before, but I've never met I you. <laughs> I've probably seen you before, but I, I can't see close enough to see your, um, your name tag close enough, so. Okay, I want to start with uh, the photographs that you were shown, and this is my first time using the uh, little okay. machine over here, so I'm sure, oh, is 86 still on? That's where I want to start. How do I, this is on the stage. It is over there. Oh, okay. You don't need this. No, I, I don't okay. need that. Thing. That's fine. That's fine. Give me more electronics. I don't believe 
Yeah, but she used the computer. She did. She was using her laptop, so I don't know. Check it. Um, yeah. You might have to unplug it. Do you see 86 up on your screen? Yes, I do. Okay. And so, in terms of uh, this, you, you called something a dead end. Is yes. That, can you point to, on your screen, the dead end that you spoke to? Okay. Right in this area right here. Okay. The roadway. The way you got the picture, so I, I, it's, it makes it hard to... Oh, I don't know. North and south. Okay. North would be to the left. Okay. And east would be straight up and down. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. The, the road... The goes... east part, east to west, would come all the way down to right where the curve is. Okay. There's a set of mailboxes right there on your right-hand side. And that's about where that white truck is. Yes. As soon as you go around that turn, it actually turns into gravel the rest of the way back. The rest of the way back. Yes. So can you put your finger on the road that is gravel the rest of the way back? It would be this road right here. And does that then go back all the way to the business? Have you ever driven by down I that I have way? been back in the business before, yes. And the gravel goes all the way back to the, the business? <coughs> to my recollection, I believe it's all gravel all the way back there. It's been okay. a while since I've been back there. Okay. And the gravel actually starts up by the mailboxes where it dead ends in that spot. Is that correct? Yes. You're familiar with this business a little bit? Somewhat. You I don't. I don't recall the name of it. That's right. You said various uh, machinery is uh, kept back there. I didn't catch the name of those. Could you tell me those, please? I believe they're called like Tracos. Okay. It's construction type equipment, okay. heavy equipment. Okay. And the, the gravel road is to assist with the, presumably with the construction equipment. <clears throat> Have you ever driven down um, the space on the, I don't know, I can't draw on it. The space next to the Parton house. driven to if, like to their residence yes um, to the residence and then the road that appears to go back to that pond have you driven on that I've never driven back okay. to the pond no did you did you know there was a pond back there before? I didn't know that there was a pond back there okay and how did you know that there was a pond back there just from regular patrol okay. out there when you normally patrol that area do you go down I that? would not drive down to the pond okay. on regular patrol <laughs> would you normally go down to the shank uh, after the dead end, down to what you uh, categorize as the main residence before the business. Did, have you ever I have that before, far? yes, but I don't make, usually we go down around, right, because it's considered like a private drive. Okay. Uh, usually we would go around to the turnaround unless we have like an extra patrol request back in the area or something like that, then we would drive back there. Okay. And have you ever seen the aerial photo of this area before? Yes. When, when did you previously see the aerial photo? Uh, when I met with the prosecutor. And when did you meet with the prosecutor? I don't have the exact date. Was it recently? Um, yes, I mean, it was prior to the trial, yes. Okay. Well, today is uh, April 4th of 2019. Do you recall, uh, was it Within this the month? last month. I'm sorry? Within the last month, yes. Okay, thank you. When you were at uh, the 4050 residence uh, of Shank Road, the Parton Smith residence, before you left with the squad or around the time that the squad left, did you observe other persons arrive to the residence? I did not leave with the squad. I actually stayed there, collected information, and then I left. I did not see anybody else so show up at the residence. You didn't see um, TJ Smith arrive? No. You didn't see Paula Smith arrive? No. So, just Lindsay there? Yes. Did you see any of her children? At the first time I was at the residence, no. Okay. When did you, if you did, see any of the other children? When I went back with the detectives. And when you went back with the detectives, who was present? I believe that there were two girls there at the residence, okay. and there was a male subject who I assumed was her husband. Okay. And the Lindsay's husband. Lindsay's husband. And the two girls, could you characterize their ages or approximation of what, what you believe they to be? I would consider them to be approximately three, four years old, if even that. Okay. So girls, actually young girls. Yes. Okay. They were very young. And did you speak to the male that you presumed was her husband at all? Uh, I did speak with him. Okay. 
And did you note that at all in your uh, report that you took that day? No. Um, and Deputy uh, Mayor, you indicated that you had been with the uh, Butler County Sheriff's Office since 1997. Um, how long have you been a deputy? A deputy? Yes. Since 3-3 three, three in 1997. Okay. You just phrased it slightly different. I thought it was since 1997, but you yes. said... I've been there a little over 22 years as a paid employee, I believe, where you were. Yeah, uh, my first year was like what they call a special deputy or auxiliary. It was approximately a year. You okay. don't actually get paid. Okay. And was today the first time that you had listened to the 911 call? That is the first time I've heard it, yes. And did you know that it was 13 minutes and 27 seconds long? I s I did not know it was that long, but I assumed it probably dispatchers probably stayed on the phone until somebody arrived on scene. Okay. You, uh, as a deputy, you have training to uh, make reports, correct? That's correct. And you did so in this case? That is correct. And would it be fair to say that you made a report close in time to the event occurring? That is correct. And in terms of that report, you'd agree with me that you indicated that your observations were that the child had a bruise on her chin and on the left side of her head to include her left eye? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Thank you. And that Ms. Parton advised you that the father came over this morning just before 0700 hours? That is correct. and that you were advised that the child had fallen in the garage while playing and struck her head on the concrete floor? On 3-7. Three, on three Correct. Approximately 4, 4 p.m. Correct. I believe it says 1,600 hours in the report. I apologize. I'm not a military person. I, okay. <coughs> and that Ms. Parton and Mr. Weshi reported that that had that information about a fall the day before had been given to him immediately on that day. Objection. I don't. Uh, approach. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Deputy, you indicated that you. Um, we're at the scene after EMT arrived, is that correct? That is correct. And how would you characterize the scene when you were there? When I walked through the door, the two MT, EMTs, um, and everybody was right there at the couch. Okay. And you're in this garage? Yes. That's a converted garage, correct? It, yes. Okay. And did you, I apologize if I, I misunderstood you, you didn't really speak to Lindsay at, at that time? And, that period of time is that correct no I didn't collect any information from her at that time okay. I waited till till we loaded Hannah up and then I came back in to collect my information okay and you you have a distinct memory that Hannah was loaded up onto a cot inside the garage is that correct I, I remember one of the squad members actually picking her up up and setting her on a cot I don't, cot I don't recall whether it was right next to the couch or right at the doorway it would have been in one of you know in that area when they picked it up put her on there so you don't have an independent memory of the emt scooping up this child from the cow the couch i do remember her in her arms and rushing out the door i do remember them one of the emts picking her up but she was put on the cot i don't recall the actual location of the cot whether it was directly outside the door or whether it was actually inside i do not recall that When you arrived at the hospital and you spoke with various persons, is that correct? At the hospital? Yes, sir. I spoke with Jason Weshey and Lindsay Parton showed up and both detectives showed up. And were Jason and Lindsay in the same area? Yes. Okay. Did you observe anything? At the hospital? Yes, sir. We were, I was just waiting for the detectives to show up. They showed up shortly after I did, so they were speaking with both of them. 
and in terms of observations, can you relate to us your observations of the interaction you saw be between Lindsay Parton and Jason Washington? Their observation, everybody was fine. indicated that you observed Mr. Weshi in his own car back at the residence. Is that correct? Yes. When You're talking about when he was going to follow the squad to the yes, hospital? Sir. Yes. Sir, are, are you aware that Ms. Parton's phone records show that outgoing 911 call is occurring at 702-51? I, I don't. I do not know what her phone records are. Okay. You haven't had an opportunity to view those, have you? I never saw them. No. Okay. How long would you say you were at the residence? The first time. I, let me back up. Okay. The first time you were there, how long were you there? I showed up at seven seventeen. I would have cleared the residence. I know I cleared the call at seven fifty three, but I would have left the residence. I didn't clear the call until I typed my narratives in. Okay. So I would have left the residence. I sat down the street somewhere. I don't do it, try not to do it while I'm driving. So I would have pulled over, made in my entries, and then I would have cleared the call. So the call was actually cleared at 7.53. I did not look at the time to see what time I physically left out the door. Okay, so the distinction being that your, your time of clearing at 7.53 is after you've left the residence, you've sat somewhere and typed up some notes, the narrative that you wrote in your statement of that facts. Is, that is correct. And then went on your way. Is that fair to say? Yes. By the time you cleared the call at 7.53, uh, had you already received the call that you were needed at the Fort Hamilton Hospital? No. I, I met up with the supervisor over at the Hanover Park. Okay. And what's the distance from where you were sitting making your notes on your statement of facts to Hanover Park? From Shank Road to Hanover Park? Sure. Um, I would have went down to the dead end of Shank Road and it probably about four or five miles. Okay. And do you know what time you arrived at the uh, Fort Hamilton Hughes Hospital? Yes, I, made, I actually made a CAT entry out at Fort okay. and it's 0838 and that would have been AM. Military time, but enough for us uh, normal people to I threw both in there. understand that. 8.38 AM. Okay, thank you. And if you arrived at 838, how long would you say it was before uh, Ms. Parton arrived? I don't recall, but I, I didn't. I don't wear a watch, so I don't know exactly what time she showed up. She okay. did show up uh, when the detectives were there, and Jason was. She was already there when I, when I showed up. And how long did you stay at Fort Hamilton Hughes? Uh, we left the residence. Uh, myself, Jason, or myself, Lindsay Parton, we all drove separate, and then both detectives, I believe, drove together in the same car. We left at 954. And that would have been a.m. 954 a.m. from Fort Hamilton? Yes. And then how long did you stay at the 4050 Shank Road uh, after arriving there? We showed up there. It was, uh, I forgot to click on scene. Okay. Um, but I put an approximate guess in my narrative. When I cleared the call, I noticed that I didn't put on scene. Okay. I, I arrived there approximately, I'm guessing, around 1010. And that would have been in the morning. And then how long were you still at the residence? Uh, I stayed at the residence. I would have to check the CAD entry because I remember when I left, when I left, um, I remember seeing a detective, um, a, a different detective, Detective Steele responding there, and I know I made a CAD entry on it. Um, that's approximately the time I left. I did not clear the call till I completed the report. And when Detective Steele arrived, were Detective Lambert and Detective Sprague still there? Sprague, yes. <laughs> I mispronounced every name. Okay. I apologize. When, so you're there. I apologize. Let me. Do you have your CAD report there to refresh your time? No, ma'am. I'm going to show you what's uh, previously marked as it states exhibit 89. Does that appear to be the CAD report that you were speaking about? Yes. Does that refresh your memory as to what time uh, you left 
the final time at 4050 Shank Road on the 8th of March. This shows about 10.50. It says Detective Steele on scene at 4004 Shank. Okay. Uh, the CAD entry before that is where I made the entry out at 4050 approximately, approximate arrival 10.10 10 hours. Okay. And that was at 10.48. Okay. So were you leaving at the time that you saw Detective Steele arrive at Mr. Weshey's residence at 4004 Shank? Yes, I, I would have been leaving when I made the first CAD entry out at 40, 50 approximate arrival, 10, 10 hours, because that's when I noticed I was back in my car and I noticed that I didn't click on scene. Okay. And you never went inside 4004 Shank, is that fair to say? I never did. And in terms of the 4050 Shank, the park residence, how far did you get into the residence other than the garage area that we know you had been in? Just right there where, where I called it the kitchen. I guess it's technically the dining room and then the kitchen. Okay. And I, I never went any farther than that. The photograph previously shown to you, and I'm, uh, I'll show it to you but not publish it, Exhibit 41. Do you recall seeing that photo, the photograph that you identified as uh, Hannah? Yes. When was the first time you saw that photo? When I met with the prosecutor. Okay. You had not previously seen that photograph? No. Okay, thank you. One second, please. Debbie, there were some questions about a report that you would have done in addition to the CAD report. Does that sound, sound about right? You made two reports? I did a general conditions report and then the, the CAD call, I can type in narratives in the CAD call, is that what you referred to? The two separate. Okay. And specifically within the CAD report, which has been marked State's Exhibit 89, what injuries did you note in the CAD report of, of Hannah? In the CAD report, to refresh my memory, I, I had put in there. Uh, Can I approach, please? Approach. What I put in, into, into the CAD report, I, I indicated some of the bruising that I saw on Hannah Weshi. Specifically, do you remember what bruising or I, injuries? is the better word that you noted in the CAD report. Do you want me to read the exact, if you give me the CAD report, I can read the exact entry if with, you'd like me to CAD, do that. I do remember that it was around her eye. Would um, the CAD report refresh your recollection as to what injuries you documented at the time yes. of the CAD report? Yes. Permission to approach her? You may. And once you've had a chance to review that, look up at me. Sufficiently refreshed your recollection? Yes. All right. And what injuries did you document that you saw on Hannah in that CAD report? It was it was a bruise that was located on her left eye by her temple. No further questions, thank you. Right. So can they uh, recross? Thank you. Deputy, you also prepared an Ohio Uniform Incident Report, is that correct? That is correct. And as part of your duties as a Butler County Sheriff's Deputy, you do make reports, correct? That is correct. Make them in the normal course of your business, is that correct? That is correct. It's actually a duty, correct? Yes. As a state actor, is that correct? As a state actor. You're, you're employed by the Butler County Sheriff's Department, which that is, is a correct. state law enforcement officer, mm -hmm. correct? Yes, ma'am. And so that you have certain duties in reporting things accurately on those reports. Would that be fair to say? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Motion to 
show you what I've marked as Defendant's Exhibit F as in Frank. Do you recognize the document I'm handing you, sir? This appears to be the report that I took. Okay. And in terms of that particular uh, report, uh, do you see on page two of the specific area called Statement of Facts? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And uh, not to limit you, your particular report has a total of five pages in it. Is that accurate? Yes, it does. And when did you finish typing in the information contained in this report? When did I finish? Yes, sir. I don't put it. I don't believe it actually puts a timestamp on it. Did you do it? On I would March? have done it. I would have completed the report before the end of my shift that day. Okay. And in terms of that, do you recall uh, writing uh, in this Ohio Uniform Incident Report within the statement of facts the, the specific bruising you observed on uh, Hannah? Yes. And is it fair to say that that says she had a bruise on her chin and on the left side of her head to include her left eye? That is correct. And you don't see any words about temple in there, is that accurate? No, I do not. Are you at all unclear about Hannah having um, bangs that morning that obscured your... your she did have bangs see? that morning. Okay. And that she had hair, I'll put mine down like this, covering her mm -hmm. ears like that? Well, when, when she was laying back on her cot, some of her hair was back. I okay. did not see her ears. Okay. It was still covering her ears. Okay. But I could see the left side of her head. Okay. And you've accurately uh, set forth in this report the bruising you observed that day? That's correct. You are asked uh, to uh, admit uh, and publish uh, Exhibit F as in Frank. Roach. Thank you, Your Honor. Next witness, State. Yes, Your Honor. At this time, we would call Deputy Lambert. While we're waiting on Deputy Lambert, I'm sorry. I don't know why I wrote that. Down. Right, yes. While we're waiting on the witness, um, Detective. We're anticipating this will be a lengthier. Yes. Okay. So, in some part. We get to an appropriate venue. Uh, I'm now going to keep them in an overlay for lunch real long. So we may, if there's an appropriate place to, to break, we may end up doing this with us in two parts of what I'm saying because I'm not keeping them here until two o'clock without lunch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Raise your right hand. It's me. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. Okay. Let's see. Watch your step here, please. Thank you. Thanks. Becca, good morning. Good morning. Before we get started, we have media folks here. Do you have objection to your facial image potentially being used by the It's okay. Uh, Ms. Sheen, you may proceed whenever you are ready. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning. Can you please state your name for the record? I am Detective Janae Lambert. And Detective, where are you currently employed? Butler County Sheriff's Office. How long have you been there? Since 2005. What are your current duties as a detective with the Butler County Sheriff's Office? I receive reports and I collect follow-ups. I go and investigate 
victims, suspects, any evidence that needs to be collected. Your Honor, may I approach the witness to retrieve uh, the defense exhibit? Uh, you may, yes. Detective, I want to direct your attention to March 8th of 2018. <coughs> Were you working on that day? Yes, ma'am. And at that time, did you respond to Fort Hamilton Hughes Hospital? Yes, ma'am. And why did you respond to Fort Hamilton Hughes Hospital? Deputy Mayor had contacted the Sheriff's Office and informed us of a female at the age of three that was unconscious. Did you go to that hospital by yourself or did you accompany somebody? Detective Sprague. Approximately what time did you get there? It was around 9. A.M. P.M.? A.M. Once at the hospital, what are your observations? What did you do? Uh, we went to the doctors. We spoke with the emergency room doctors. They informed us that Jeff, the victim... That's the thing. You can't testify what other people were informing you or telling you. Here's so you can't. Okay. Based on the information that you received, what did you do? I spoke with Jason Weshey and, and asked him what happened. And who is Jason Weshey? He is the father of the victim. And what's the victim's name, if you know? Hannah Weshi. After you spoke to Jason, what did you do next? Spoke with Lindsay. And who is Lindsay? Lindsay is the babysitter for Hannah. Do you see Lindsay in the courtroom today? Yes, I do. Can you please, so the record is clear for the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, can you please indicate where Lindsay is and what she is wearing? Lindsay is sitting to the left of me. She's wearing a black jacket and a pinkish shirt. All right, at this time, I would ask that the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant. They reflect. Thank you. <coughs> so you spoke with Lindsay. Tell yes, me about that. I asked Lindsay what happened that morning. And what did she tell you? That Hannah was dropped off by Jason. She told me that every morning Jason texts her to let her know when he's on his way. She said that he's usually late. He texts her at 6.52, saying they were on their way. They got there around 6.55. He walked Hannah to the door in the garage and handed Hannah off to Lindsay. Lindsay stated that Hannah asked her dad for double kisses. Lindsay stated that as Hannah was walking in to the house, Lindsay was putting, taking her robe off. She said Hannah turned around as she was removing her jacket and said, donuts and couch. Did she tell you anything else? She said at that time, Hannah collapsed and as she fell, she struck a child's basket on the way to the ground. When she said she collapsed, did Lindsay indicate in which direction Hannah collapsed? Forward, backward, sideways, something else? I asked. She said forward. And you said she struck a child's basket on the way to the ground? Yes. Did Lindsay tell you anything else? Lindsay, I asked Lindsay what Hannah, what her demeanor was like when she came to the house. And she had told me that she was perfectly normal. She said she was talking, said bye to her dad. Everything seemed fine. She just seemed tired. Did Lindsay ever give you any explanations of other injuries or accidents that Hannah may have had? She did. Tell me about that. 
She informed me of the night before. She said at 4 p.m. Hannah was playing in the garage with the other children. She was standing on a toy train. <coughs> Lindsay stated she observed Hannah fall off that toy train and she struck the handlebar on the way down when she came to a rest on the concrete floor in the garage. After you spoke with Lindsay, the defendant in this case, what did you do next? We asked Lindsay if we could respond to her residence. We needed to collect photos of the residents. She agreed and we followed her to the house. And where did you go? We went to 4050 Shank Road. Is that located in Butler County, Ohio? Yes, ma'am. Hanover Township? Yes, ma'am. You indicated you went there to take photographs? Yes, ma'am. All right. Tell me about what happened once you were there. When we responded there, we walked in through the front door. Lindsay was showing us around the house. Uh, she showed us where they typically go in, which is through the garage door. She showed us each room and we took photos of each room. When you say we took photos, who else was there? Uh, Detective Sprague. You said you took photos. Did you go through the entire house? We did. Your Honor, permission to approach the witness? You may. <coughs> Detective, I'm Henny with been Mark, States Exhibits 96 through States Exhibit 123. Can you please take a look at those? Yes, ma'am. Have you had an ample opportunity to review States Exhibit 96 through 123? Yes, ma'am. Do you recognize those exhibits? Yes, I do. How do you recognize those? Those are Lindsay Parton's residence. And are those photographs of States Exhibits 96 through States Exhibit 123, are those true and accurate photographs taken at 4050 Shank Road on March 8th, 2018? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Your Honor, at this time, we would seek to admit and publish States Exhibit 96 through 123. Ms. Howard? No objection, thank you. Exhibits 96 through 123 will be admitted to make publish your vote. All right, if I can draw your attention to your screen, looking at State's Exhibit 96, what are we looking at? The front of the residence. And when you say the front of the residence, which residence is this? It's 4050 Shank Road. And who resides at 4050 Shank Road? Lindsay Parton. And it's March 8th. Uh, what was the weather like that day, if you recall? Very cold. <clears throat> And in this um, State's Exhibit 96, what viewpoint do we have of the, the residence? It's the front, the front door and the garage door. State's Exhibit 97, what are we looking at? This is inside the garage. At 4050 Shank Road. <laughs> is there anybody in the photograph that you identify? Lindsay Parton. States Exhibit 98, what is that? That would be the toy train that Hannah <coughs> fell off the night before. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that answer. That's the toy train that Hannah fell off of the night before. And that's what Lindsay told you? Yes, ma'am. States Exhibit 99? It's the garage door leading into the residence. Were you able to observe what the flooring was like in the garage? Yes. And what was that? It was concrete. <coughs> States Exhibit 100, what is that? 
It's a measurement of the stairs. And these stairs, where are these stairs located? These are the stairs in the garage leading into the house. And approximately, there's a measurement, approximately how many inches is that off the ground? Approximately five and a half. Oh, I am so sorry. Take the wrong number. <clears throat> hmm. All right, State's Exhibit 101. What is that a photograph of? It's the stairs from the garage going into the house, top stoop. So there's two stairs there? Yes, ma'am. All right. And what is the measurement on this one? Six. Six inches. State's Exhibit 102. That is the door that's Where? in between the garage and the residence. State's Exhibit 103. That is the first room you come into from the garage. Would you have to take those steps this, to get into this room? Yes. The, so you're looking, you're in the first room in the, in the residence coming in from the garage, and you're taking the photo of the garage. So in States Exhibit 103, we're we looking then back into the garage from the residence. Yes, ma'am. States Exhibit 104. So this is the first room that the photo was just taken. Um, I'm not sure if that's considered her dining room or, or what that room is. Were you able to observe the flooring in that room? Yes, ma'am. And what was that? Carpet. State's Exhibit 105? It's the same room, different angle. And what are we looking into? We are looking into the kitchen. States Exhibit 106? Still the same room, dining room, looking into the kitchen. States Exhibit 107? The kitchen. Is there anybody in that photograph that you recognize? Yes, ma'am. Lindsay Parton. Do you know, it appears there's a child in the photograph. Were you aware of who that is? That is one of her daughters. <coughs> States Exhibit 108. That is the kitchen. You can see photos of the dining room and also the living room. States Exhibit 109. You see partially the kitchen. But that is the living room. So from this angle, we can see to the left the kitchen and to the right what you call the living room? Yes, ma'am. States Exhibit 110? That's the living room. States Exhibit 111? That is the living room with the front door and the hallway leading to the other bedrooms. States Exhibit 112? That is the bathroom. States Exhibit 113? That is one of the adult rooms. States Exhibit 114. Same room. <clears throat> 115. That's the same adult room. States Exhibit 116. That is a photograph of you're in the hallway looking in towards the child's room and another adult room. States Exhibit 117. It's the child's room. It appears that those are bunk beds. Yes, ma'am. States Exhibit 118. Child's room. States Exhibit 119. Child's room. 
120. It's the hallway looking into the other adult's bedroom. States Exhibit 121. It's the other adult bedroom. And finally, States Exhibit 123. And the other angle of the adult bedroom going into the bathroom. While you're at 4050 Shank Road taking these photographs, is the defendant present throughout this? Yes, ma'am. At any point did you speak to the defendant again at that residence? Yes, she voluntarily uh, walked us through and informed us of pretty much just different things throughout the house. Uh, she spoke about the train. She pointed that out to us when we were in the garage and explained to us what had happened with Hannah <clears throat> the night before. She informed us there that she <coughs> let Jason know at 5 when he arrived to pick her up. As we walked through the kitchen, um, we stopped into the dining room and that's where she had pointed to the child's cart and said that's where <coughs> Hannah had fell, struck her head on the way down. So you used the word cart. Tell me about that. Uh, that's what she called it. I'm not really certain what kind of child's toy it is. It, it appeared to be some sort of cart. I don't know. Is this the child's basket that you referred to earlier, or you don't Yes, know? basket, yes. <clears throat> While we were in the kitchen, she had told us that Hannah, on a previous day, got into the kitchen and I don't recall if it was ketchup or mustard, but she took one of the bottles and walked into the bathroom and was squirting it into the toilet. She said that she can be rather mischievous. When now at the residence at 4050 Shank Road, when the defendant was telling you about hitting this card or how Hannah hit this card, did she ever elaborate on how she hit that cart or that basket? She did. She demonstrated how it happened. And at this time, I would ask permission for the witness to demonstrate what, in fact, the defendant showed her that she did. I think position from the defense. Um, think about it. You know, I, I think she should say what my client said. That was a good Detective, can you please demonstrate for the ladies and gentlemen of the jury exactly what the defendant in this case showed you or demonstrated to you how Hannah fell? Yes. She said that Hannah was walking in through the dining room and turned around, looked back at her, and as she's taking her jacket off, she says, donuts and couch, and falls down and hits her face on the cart as she heads down towards the floor. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There's been some talk about a train in this case um, the, from the a fall from the previous day. Your Honor, at this time, I would request permission to approach the witness. You're right. States Exhibit 90. Okay. Do you recognize what I've just handed you? Yes, ma'am. Or ma set in front of you? Yes, ma'am. And what is that? That is the toy train that belongs to Lindsay Parton. <clears throat> and is that the same toy train that you photographed and saw at the residence on March 8th, 2018? Yes, ma'am. And is States Exhibit 90 in the same or substantially the same condition as when you last saw it on March 8th of 2018? Yes, ma'am. And detective, have you had an opportunity to measure the seat portion of 
that train. Yes, ma'am. And I'm going to ask you a, a follow-up question of that. Did Ms. Parton, the defendant in this case, did she indicate where Hannah was standing on State's Exhibit 90? She did. And where was that? She was standing on the yellow part of the seat. <coughs> and she stated as she fell, she had the handlebars before coming to her rest on the concrete floor. You said the yellow part of the seat? Yes, ma'am. And you're at this time, I would ask to approach the witness and she can identify which part she's referring to. <laughs> can you please identify which part you were referring to that she was standing on? I'm sorry, it was orange, not yellow. Orange part. Excuse me. Can you indicate that you've had an opportunity to measure that orange part of that seat? I did. Your Honor, permission to approach the witness? You may. I'm going to hand you with Ben Mark State's Exhibit 151. <coughs> Do you recognize State's Exhibit 151? Yes, I do. And what is that? This is a measure of the seat on the toy train. <coughs> and is State's Exhibit 151 what's depicted in there, the measurement of the toy train, State's Exhibit 90? Is that a true and accurate representation of that? Yes, ma'am. Right, at this time, we would seek to admit and publish State's Exhibit 151. Yes. No objection. All right, it'll be admitted, you may publish. Your Honor, may I approach the witness to retrieve the exhibit? Yes. All right, Detective, drawing your attention to State's Exhibit 151, what are we looking at? We are looking at the toy train measurement of the seat. And from your measurement, how tall is that seat? Eight inches. Detective, at any point did the defendant in this case give any other explanation or possible explanation for defendant, uh, I'm sorry, for Hannah's injuries? She informed me that on Tuesday, it was a nice day, and they went for a walk. And they were walking down the gravel drive, and she stated that Hannah had fell on the gravel, and she had marks on her chest, and she had bruising and a mark under her chin. After you took photographs at 4050 Shank, after you spoke to the defendant, what did you do next? We asked Lindsay to come back with us to the sheriff's office so we could get a recorded statement. And did she do that? Yes. Who was present there? It was myself and Detective Sprague initially. And where did this conversation take place? It took place at the Butler County Sheriff's Office, 705 Hanover Street. And were you in a room? Were you outside? Were you inside? We were inside in an interview room. It was myself, Detective Sprague, and Lizzie Parton. At that point, um, at, or at any point, did you notify the defendant of her Miranda rights? Yes. Your Honor, permission to approach the witness. Before we do that, why don't we have a little sidebar up here so I can figure out the timing and all this. <clears throat> <laughs> Thank you. Your Honor, permission to approach the witness? You may. I'm showing you. It's been marked State's Exhibit 92. Can you go ahead and take a look at that exhibit? Yes, ma'am. And do you recognize State's Exhibit 92? I do. And what is that? This is the Miranda rights card that we give. Is that a true and accurate copy of the Miranda warnings that you gave to defendant in this yes, case? Yes, ma'am, it is. And detective, you indicated that you interviewed the defendant. Yes, ma'am. Was that audio and video recorded? Yes. May <clears throat> I have permission to approach the witness? You may. 
I'm handing you States Exhibit 93. Take a look at that. Do you recognize States Exhibit 93? I do. How do you recognize that exhibit? I viewed this recording. What is that? This is the video, audio and video of the interview with Lindsay Barton. You indicated you reviewed that? Yes, ma'am. And you put your initials on that as well? I did. And Detective Lambert, is that a true and accurate depiction of your interview with the defendant on March 8th of 2018? Yes, ma'am. At this time, we would seek to admit and publish. Uh, any objection on the issue of admissibility at this point? No, Your Honor. Uh, and that's just Exhibit 93? Yes, Your Honor. All right. 93 will be admitted. Um, Ms. Shea, your next desire will be to publish the video. That's correct, Your Honor. All right. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm given to understand that at this point, this uh, exhibit, this video is fairly extensive. And noting that it is about 25 till 12, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and bring for an early lunch. Uh, so I'll be back here uh, about 12.30ish and start congregating. We'll be looking for you. Hope to get started about 25 till 1, 20 till 1 at the absolute latest. Um, We'll probably also try to necessitate, facilitate some type of a break during the video for purposes of restroom or whatever. But uh, anyway, uh, thinking this made the most sense for convenience. So uh, keep your lanyards on and your notepads in your chairs. Uh, again, I know you're kind of getting deeper into this, you're hearing more things. Please resist any temptations of discussing the case, uh, researching the case. Don't let anybody discuss the case with you, whether it be each other or somebody else. When we come back, of course, I will always question you about uh, the admonitions I gave you, gave you at the beginning of the case. And those have to be reported to me. That is your duty. So, with that, we will go ahead and break for lunch. You folks uh, will be discharged. We'll stay on the record for, you for a few moments uh, in case there's any housekeeping to address outside of the presence of the jury. Still under oath, you obviously are not permitted to discuss the case with any other potential witnesses uh, uh, as you are still on the stand technically. I am also going to research another issue that we were discussing earlier. If either party wishes to aid in that by pre presenting any of its own case law, always greatly appreciated. Otherwise, anything else that we need to address for a break for lunch? Your Honor, yes, I did want to address an issue. All right. um, I don't know if we can approach at sidebar just for a minute. I want to discuss something that came up during testimony. Okay.